When discussing radiopharmaceuticals, there's there's obviously a big need to focus on manufacturing and supply. We know Clarity's been establishing that from the beginning, but can you give us an idea about at copper isotopes specifically, how they may differ on that front to other isotopes? Yeah, so we've been focusing for some period of time, like we've been in copper isotopes since the beginning, mm-hmm. right? So, and this has always been front of mind for us. We've had, once again, we've 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 had uh, quite a few people from our Gita who've actually commercialized a new isotope before, right? So we know the issues that you need to address. Fortunately, and this isn't something we invented, right? The physical characteristics of copper 64 and copper 67 are ideal for the current radiopharmaceutical market, right? So when we look at people trying to produce actinium or Mm -hmm. lead, right? These are going to be incredibly difficult isotopes uh, to manufacture and then supply. Just from like a a safety perspective or also like a... No, just make it. So when you're making particular, certainly those isotopes, you might get um, uh, other products being made, which are highly toxic, right? So we don't have that with copper 67, right? We can manufacture large volumes of copper 67 and not have that. And to the point, you know, that Northstar were making copper 67 and technetium on the same, on the same rototrons, right? You can't do that with an actinium based product. All right. So, um, so it's fantastic. And then copper 64, once again, so easy to make, right? On a cyclotron. So, um, and it just so happens the properties of those isotopes, as I said, ideally suited for today, particularly uh, when we're even looking at, you know, extended imaging times with copper 64. And then obviously the beta of copper 67 is fantastic. So, um, so we've spent, and as I said, this, this is not a, uh, you know, we're not jumping into a new isotope like a lot of people are. Let's go a new isotope and let's see what happens. We've been doing this for a while. So copper 67 and our products at this point in time, it's the first, as I mentioned before, it's the first product and isotope manufacturing under one roof. Yep. With our partnership with Northstar, we're able to do all of this under one roof, right? Makes us very unique in the market. When you look at the convoluted supply chains of lutetium-based products, for instance, which can't do that, which are relying on aging nuclear reactors, most of which are in Europe and places like Russia, right? But then even on the copper 64 side, cyclotrons, um, we don't need that many cyclotrons because of the half-life of copper 64. Centralized manufacture, once again, of high volume, copper 64, make the products and distribute. Right, And we're doing that. We're running our clinical trials exactly like that. When we look at other isotopes, either therapeutically, when we look at lutetium, as I mentioned, or even the alphas now, which have um, you know safety concerns and manufacturing concerns and, and, and supply concerns, where you can't even access these products at this point, point in time. Um, it's very difficult to do so. And yes, there's a little bit of supply coming, starting to come online. And we're looking to get access to that because we are looking at some of those, right? But um, when we look at it, we can't see this as a sustainable play. Copper 67, we see as sustainable, right? When we look at the diagnostics, gallium has a one hour half-life, okay? Uh, people don't want to commercialize it. There's opportunities to commercialize. People don't want to commercialize. Um, and then when we look at fluorine, you're competing with FDG. You have that issue, right? Copper 64, we don't have that issue, right? Yes, we'll have some dedicated uh, cyclotrons. Yes, we're making that already in the US and Australia. There's a number of sites that have that capability that aren't making FDG, right? So, And we don't have to. The stability of our products allow us to centralize manufacture and broadly distribute. So on that basis, you would say that you, you're you really well prepared already, I guess, for commercial supply. So some scale up, but like you've already done a lot of the fundamental work there. So we've always made sure we're ahead of the curve when it comes to our development, right? There's no use having, you know, hundreds of thousands of doses already lined up and ready to go when you're doing clinical trials. Right, so we have well in excess to get to commercial at this point in time. When we're looking at this this capacity uh, capabilities, yes, we'll look to partner with some more groups. But really, the take home is this can happen all under one roof. You know, the outcome where we could be rototrons and cyclotrons could sit next to each other. The cyclotrons now are very uh, high energy type cyclotrons. Once again, made by our IBA. IBA also make the rototrons. Um, they could sit at, sit under one roof, manufacturing both products and broadly distribute. Is that how we'll play out in the role uh, the, out in the US? We'll see how that starts to evolve, and some of that will come out shortly. 
Is that how we'll play in Europe, for instance, next? Potentially. That makes a lot of sense. Is that how we would roll out into Asia? Yes. Right? And it's about choosing the right country to fit in and have the right manufacturing capabilities. But this really is a continued bolt-on opportunity, both in the therapy space and the diagnostic space. Are you going to be able to do that with Letitia? It's unlikely, right? Are you going to be able to do that even with the with the diagnostics? Like gallium, you know, that's a lot of gallium generators if you're trying to roll out into Asia, for instance, right? A lot of waste and those sorts of things. We think we're perfectly suited to overcome all of that, right? Our focus at the moment is the US, but as we roll out and we bring those uh, products closer to the market, Europe is a is a fantastic opportunity uh, opportunity for us. And then somewhere in eight weeks, we consider Australia as part of Asia. You know, will we set up, you know, Rototrons here? Probably not because there's not enough people who live here, right? So, but um, you can ship the Copper 67 in um, and uh, Asia, you know, we might look more centrally uh, for that to really deal with the whole of Asia.